I am going to feed leaf of potato which is having this is early blight so that we can see here okay this image I am going to feed to my deep learning model so when I feed it it will predict like 92 percent it belongs to early blight okay that I am going to print here so early blight and it's predicting early blight our model is working 100 percent accurately Hi everyone, this is Raju from Smart Air Technologies. Today we will see how to classify potato diseases using a sleep. So first of all we will understand what is this and why we need it and how we are going to implement it. So in the first part, here we are going to detect what disease uh, that potato is having based on its sleep. But that's a process and why we need to study this. So one thing is it will help us to cure. Once we know the disease is very easy for us to cure okay there are so many precautions or any synthetic or artificial ways to uh, solve the problem the second one it will save the money it will be very pr uh, productive so you can cure the disease of our plant that means it will become productive because your crop will grow better once you solve that problem or you overcome the disease so then third part is how in this part we are going to build the deep learning model which can classify our potato into early blight, late blight or whether it's healthy. So this third part will be containing entirely a coding stuff. So it's under percent coding. So let's start with the coding stuff directly. In the first part, I am going to import all the required libraries for me. Okay, Globe and OS, which is used to access the files and folders. Then NumPy is used to work with multidimensional arrays or arrays. Seaborn is used to work with plot. Matplotlib is also used to work with plots, or sometimes images can be uh, displayed with Matplotlib. Pandas is used to import any data set or create some data set. Okay? Then sklearn is there. With this sklearn, which is a model library, using in our case we are using test train split uh, option of this, and then we are going to use TensorFlow and Keras. First, I am going to take the complete path. So my path name is Potato Lake that you can see here. That's a folder path you should give. Under that, you should be having the classes: early blight, healthy, or late blight. So here you can see under each you should keep the proper images okay that's how the data set should be once that is there i am going to take what are the directories are there that is what are the classes are there in the main folder okay we call them as a classes or directories okay uh, then i'm going to uh, extract all the images in those uh, paths that you can see here i will be taking entire complete path is a global library global fetches the particular destination uh, file folders and files okay here i am i am asking it to give double uh, entered it means it will first go into that main folder then it will go into our <coughs> subfolder then it will give me the each and every image path so that image path i will go to take here so i am getting all the image paths now what i should do first i will read all the image paths one by one using lambda then when i read it i will split it for example you take this potato leaf late blight okay this is one image path i will take this and i will uh, split this okay split it and i will extract only this part what does this part mean this part will tell me that particular leaf belongs to which class or which category okay so this i will take and i will make it as a label for this particular image this is a label it's a second value in the path okay. i'll do like that it means i will be having two lists now one list will be having all the uh, image paths and second list will be having the label for all the images that you can see above so now i will be having two lists from using two lists i am going to create a data set or a data frame using pandas i ask it to concat uh, okay concat what file path and the labels then i will be getting a data frame named data which contains two columns one is file path and another one is its labels so then comes i'm going to plot and see 
how distribution is done actually late blight and early blight they are distributed thousand thousand images are there but when you see healthy images it's uh, less than 200 images are there for this class then i'm going to split the whole data into train and test using train test library which we defined above which we imported from scikit-learn it will uh, split the data into training and testing with a test size of 25 percent and uh, training size will be now 75 percent okay random state will define to mix up the data before uh, before splitting and then i am going to print some of the values or some of the images in my data set that i am going to you do by with the help of plt this plt we imported it from matplotlib okay so here what i will do is i will try to read that data file path data file path nothing but this is a file path column which we defined above from that we will take some images okay some values then we are going to create them we are going to plot them okay okay this is the most important step which we are discussing now we call this as an image augmentation in this part what we will do is we will take the help of image data generator how image augmentation will help and what is image data generator will tell you for example I have one leaf like this say my leaf is like this ok now I have 100 images now I need 1000 images in that case what I will do is I will treat this image ok I will tilt like this and this will become a new image the same image I tilted it like this you can create multiple more images from single image you can tilt on right side or left side you can zoom in zoom out increase the contrast or like that you can create more than 10 or 20 images from only single images we call this process an augmentation whenever our data is very less in that case if we do augmentation there is probability of increasing the data set if data set is more than getting better accuracy is more that is one reason and the another reason is when you do augmentation the same images orientation contrast will change in different ways so during testing if you feed that image in any angle it can feed properly okay i will give an example here for example you you train a small baby by showing apple you just show apple from one side you will learn that much what if if you tilt that apple in all the angles and show to that baby how you will learn you will learn better than the previous technique that's what we call it as an augmentation always leads to better accuracy so that to, that can be done using image data generator library okay here we are defining that this one we imported it from keras you can scroll up you will see that image data generator we imported okay as i mentioned uh, we'll discuss those things here okay you can you can check that our library there so now now our function is train data then this train data then what i need to feed i need to feed all the images so i will ask it to take training images and their size should be 100 100 and their batch size should be 32 this 100 100 is this image size okay 100 cross 100 100 pixel cross 100 pixel so 32 batch size what is mean by batch size is how many images you want to feed to any model at once or any process at once for example if augmentation if i take one image and tilt it on all the directions and change its contrast it will take some time to do for all 100 images what if i will take 32 images at once and do the same process for 32 images at once it can be done in faster way like that i will do for test train and validation <coughs> now here we are going with transfer learning what is mean by transfer learning actually so for example you have two people one is person a another one is person b so now this person a who already know okay this person b okay this person a you know who already know karate b don't know any martial art but you want to teach kung fu to both of them who will learn faster 
A will learn faster and perfectly than B. Why this happens? It happens because A already knows something about martial art. He may not know anything about Kung Fu, but he knows Karate which already have some techniques related to Kung Fu so that he will learn better. But whereas B, he don't know anything. So in that case, training from base to this person B is very, it will take more time and also accuracy will be very less. But whereas for person A, teaching Kung Fu is very easy. That is, you are doing transfer learning here. It means you are using his information, his uh, talent of Karate to train for Kung Fu. So this technique we call as a transfer learning. In the same way, if you go on building any deep learning model from scratch, it will take a lot more time and accuracy will not be that much proper. But what if you use some pre-trained or already trained model? ResNet 50 is one of like that model, which is trained for ImageNet data set. Okay, we will call that here. Okay, we will we'll call that here and we will train for our data set. I will ask it to train for my three classes. Okay, my three class data set I will ask it to train for. So once it trains, it will train better than our model which we create from base, base using all the layers. Maybe uh, convolution 2D, maybe dense layer or like that. Okay, so whatever the layers you use and you create a new model, it will not it will be better than this but you need to do so much of uh, combinations and so much of uh, this stuff okay but whereas transfer learning it's very easy it's already trained for something very better that you are using here resonate 50 is already trained for thousand classes maybe cat dog so far like that you use that information to train for your potato leaf disease to get better accuracy you can mention what type of optimizer you want to use Adam, Adagard, or, or other few uh, things, okay. But among them, Adam, which is mostly used and which always leads to some good accuracy. And last, what type of loss you want to get? Categorical cross entropy, or if you have two classes, you can give per binary cross entropy. And what type of accuracy you want to take as an output, okay. Here I am uh, writing the early stopping function. Early stopping what it will do is if you are training a deep learning model for 100 epochs but after 20th epoch your model does not increase any accuracy or reduction in loss. In that case it will stop at 20. It will not go to 100. To use that here you can mention what is callback function. Callback equal to my callback if you do then it will use that function. Otherwise if you want to train for particular epochs completely you can mention as I mentioned here box 20 I want this model only to train up to 20 epochs so here only you are, uh, you are getting almost 100% accuracy you can see here even validation accuracy is 98% so once that's done you are going to save that model and then you are going to plot the graphs okay what is the loss and what is the accuracy you need to plot the graphs here it says uh, the training accuracy is 100 percent but testing accuracy is 90 more than 98 percent are like that if you train it for more epochs maybe 50 epoch or 100 epochs are like that there is possibility of increasing the, this testing accuracy and loss loss is 8 percent here training loss is two uh, less than two percent or zero percent you can say in that case if you train bit more there is possibility of reduction in loss also then i am going to validate my model giving some validation data set which are not belongs to our training data set if i give that and i will check you can see for that also 98% 98.51% percent of accurately it's predicting then what i will do is i am going to uh, take out all the classification report it will contain precision score recall f1 score support these all things will be extracted from confusion matrix these things will be having their own equations but to let to know it very simple let let me let us understand like precision is almost equal to accuracy almost equal to accuracy i can't say let precision equal to accuracy almost equal to accuracy so if precision is 99 percent accuracy will almost be same okay
and then now what I will do is I will feed some data to my model you can see here okay I will ask it to predict for I I nothing but some testing images okay for loop I am writing and I am reading testing data some testing images I will feed and I will predict on that in the final result you can see truth was early blight my predicted was early blight true was early blight like this okay you can see some other late blight so here you can see okay late blight and my prediction was like late blight so here my model is almost predicting 100 percent properly so this this is okay now if what if you want to feed a single image how you can feed it here i wrote code for that where you can give single image paths which i showed initial of this video when you force uh, when you feed that single image i will read that image using c2 and then i am going to feed to my model model dot predict that it will give me percentage 90 92 percent it will belongs to class 1 0 percent positivity it belongs to class 2 and 7 percent positivity belongs to class 3 it means which percentage is more it's actually belongs to that class that you can see here once it prediction give me that value i'll check i will get the maximum element out of that it's 92 percent and where is that located it's located its index is uh, what is its index value okay now i will take that okay and I will print it as a result. So this is the thing, okay? This is the way you need to use this to predict for any given image. Thank you very much. This was all about our today's video. We will see in the next video. If you like it, like and subscribe our channel. Click on the bell button so that you will be getting updated with our new videos. Thank you very much.